and action. Hello, children. Let's welcome to the inaugural video of the Arm Wrestling Mass Prediction Series. This is the very first video where I try to leverage the statistics I've been gathering on different arm wrestlers to see if we can't put together some prediction videos with a little more substance behind it than I just love this guy better or the other guy's just a filthy hippie. And today we will talk about uh, Devin Lorette, who's probably ranked number two, maybe number two plus, because he's, he's he seems to be quite a bit ahead, numbers three and four. And Vitaly Lalayton, who entered the top five rankings. I don't know if he's four or five or something, but he just recently entered it. So he's climbing. So he's got momentum on his side, and Devin's got history and performance. All right. Six categories. They're in order of importance, but they are not weighted the same. So I weight history higher than I weight higher than I weight strategy. But I'm not going to divulge what the ratings are at this point. We have to. Uh, I got to run several several matches and develop some calibrations and develop some correlations, and then we'll tweak it. And then then I'll release it once I get once I get the algorithm and stuff figured out. Then I'll just make it public, and then y'all can do this on your own. Anyways, history. They have three shared opponents within the East First West King of the Table family. Devin had blowouts on all of them. Vitaly beat two of them and then had losses to two. This is a clear advantage to Devin, just based on history. Technique. This is this is Devin's uh, sweet spot. This is probably the strongest aspect of Devin's arm wrestling game. Is he's he, he runs a lot of top rolls, but other than that, hooks, shoulder rolls, and king's moves, he's pro he's equally proficient in these three. Vitaly. He's going to top roll. He can do every single arm wrestling technique out there as long as it's a top roll. He, you're not going to see a lot of surprises from him unless he just like crawls into a cave somewhere and comes out two or three years later. So that's two for Devin. Power. Vitaly's flash pinned people 14 times and has never been flash pinned. Devin's, got a nine, Devin's actually got a 9-9 to nine flash pin record. But that little asterisk right there, you can't read the footnotes down there because it's off the screen. But I removed the eight flash pins that Levon inflicted upon Devin. Uh, Levon is so far above and beyond the rest of the weight class. His his matches distort the results for the individual puller. So I just I just washed those out. So Vitaly wins the power category. Endurance. I have a way of analyzing this, but I don't have a way of applying empirical data to it. So this is a lot of my opinion, but I'll tell you right now, between rounds, Devin hardly ever sits down. Devin looks just as fresh at the start of his as round six as he looks at the start of round one. I mean, he's dripping wet with sweat, and he's leaving puddles everywhere he goes, but he moves just as quickly, and he racks just as quickly. A lot of Devin's opponents... They sit down between rounds. They just look, they look dead. I think Devin's work capacity, and I think it's due to his training, which he, he, he divulges a lot of his training, but I don't think he divulges the key aspects of it. But I think this guy trains endurance and work capacity way above and beyond anybody else. Only Levon seems to match him, and that's just because Levon's power is so off the charts. He doesn't really need endurance because he doesn't have long matches speed speed return re, um, speed refers to ready goes Vitaly wins 37 ready goes lost seven 24 were ties that's huge okay Devin loses more ready goes than he wins and he loses way more than our tie I think Vitaly is obviously the faster person I also think that he's obviously the more powerful person maybe not the strongest but he's definitely more powerful. Strategy. This is something I'm still working on. The thought here was, let's say, right now they're equal. Four to three, three to four. They're basically equal. My thought was, if Vitaly, let's say Vitaly won 18 matches on fouls. 
and lost three. Okay, let's just say these top numbers. So he, he won 18 on fouls and only lost. That means he never fouls out, but he causes his opponents to foul. And let's say Devin lost nine matches on fouls. And, you know, that means there's a clear strategy there for Vitaly, who never fouls, to cause Devin to foul out. Of course, this could be vice versa. If Devin won 29 matches on fouls and Vitaly lost eight on fouls, theoretically, then there might be a, a plan there. Instead of just blasting towards the pin, you might want to make the matches longer, make your opponent screw up, that sort of thing. As it is, these guys are both highly aggressive, very offensive pullers. They're always going for the pin. They're not really playing around with fouls all that much. So that's the data. We, as they're building my small modular nuclear reactor, I can't dump this into the computer. So we have to wait minutes for me to do all these calculations on an abacus. And oh, I know, everybody's going, well, Devin's going to win. He's like a gazillion to one favorite. Duh, everybody knows that. Eh, that very well may be the case, but I'm still developing this process because not every match has Devin in it. Oh, you're welcome. That not every match has Devin in it. Okay. Boom. I calculate Devin is way in excess of a two-to-one favorite. Um, like I said, the weighting of these are not equal. This is weighted higher than this, and they're in the order of importance, but I'll share the weightings and the algorithm and stuff once I get some calibration going and I have it correlated to a lot of different matches. And as always, children, do you know what's coming next? Call your mama, okay? If you can, call your mama. If you can't, I feel very bad for you. I'm sorry, but if you can't call your mama, at least call someone and tell them you love them. Now I have, oh, 50 seconds left. Somebody told me that to keep your, um, oh, I can't go backwards, to keep your YouTube videos high, or fully monetized. I can't exactly remember what they called it. There's, it was Brian Shaw's media guy says, you want your videos to be eight minutes long. So I got 30 seconds to tell you. I don't know if y'all are keeping up with what's going on with East First West. I don't know anything more than you do. Um, I don't have any inside sites, but I really hope that everybody gets this start, sorted out. Um, the world... The entire world needs Elon Musk and Donald Trump to get along. My world, or the arm wrestling world, needs Robert Baxter and Engen Terzi to get along. So I, so, I hope the uh, arm wrestling world gets our, uh, our parents happy with each other again. Until then, love you kids. Bye.